excellent teacher, Lior Joseph. Let's tune in to hear from the Word of God. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Always a pleasure and an honor to come to you with the living word of the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And remember this, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. My name is Leroy Joseph, and with me today, as all, you know, often, is my wife, Patricia. It's a pleasure and an honor to come to you. We've been doing this in ministry for over 51 years. We've been married for 51 years in ministry for 51 years, and God has given us this platform to be able to share with you the word of the Lord for the many, many of you that's listening all over the world. We just want to give a shout out to you. Those of you there in Taiwan, we, pray, we thank God for David and, and his wife, you know, for the work that they're doing there in Taiwan. We pray God's divine protection upon you, that God will continue to bless you in what you're doing. We pray for our brother David there in India, for the tremendous work that he's doing. And all the other wonderful ministers of the gospel faithfully carrying out the word of the Lord. Friends in South Africa and in, 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 in um, Tanzania and just all over. Thank God for you. Thank God for the work that you're doing. May God bless you. Those of you in the Caribbean, in Trinidad, in St. Vincent, places where we labor abundantly. And hey, we don't know you, but those of you in Mexico, we give you a shout out. In Egypt, thank God for you. And all over where the Way TV, the Cross TV is reaching you, God bless you and what a privilege. So I'm going to let my wife come now and greet you. Praise the Lord. Let everything that had breath praise the Lord. And it's always a joy and a pleasure to come and minister and give you the word of God. We trust that as you hear the word of God, you will really gain something from it and you will apply it to your life and start living it. And remember, the promises of God are yea and amen. It's real. And many things you have experienced already with, of answered prayer, and there are many more things you can experience in your life as you walk with him, as you talk with him, as you believe. Just let that faith receive what God is saying to you today. Amen. Praise God. And please, we want to make an appeal to you. You know, we've been privileged, thank God, for Dr. Joseph for allowing us, giving us the privilege to be on this um, television ministry, that television network, the Cross TV, and, um, you know, we, we do want to hear from you. We know we're reaching you. We get feedback from him, but we do want to hear from you. You have our information on the screen. You have my wife's website. You have our website, our email, telephone number. Just let us know that you know, we're reaching you and how the word of the Lord is helping you. And if you can, in any way, you can help us. You have our cash app. We would be grateful for whatever you can do to help us. We will appreciate that. But again, it's, we will come to you. We will continue to come to you. It's our pleasure to come to you with the word of the Lord. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you've given us. Thank you for the cross TV. Thank you for this network, God, that's reaching into the homes of so many people all over the world. 
And as your word reached into that hole, into their hope, we pray it would reach into their lives, God. Their, their hearts would be open to you for those who do not know you as Savior. Father, that they would experience your love reaching towards them, their God, in the name of Jesus. And they would surrender to you in Jesus' name. Father, right now I'm praying in the name of Jesus for those who are sick in their body. Whatever the condition is, in the name of Jesus Christ, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're dealing with, we pray in Jesus' name to be healed of your infirmity, to be healed of your sickness, be made whole in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, for those who are looking, God, for, for, for encouragement, Lord, let the word of God come to them, Lord, and let them grab it and be encouraged in their lives, God, to live for you, knowing that you care for them. So, Lord, we just thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We believe you receive and you will have it in the name of Jesus. So today we want to continue our teaching on keys to answered prayer. Keys to answered prayer. We've been taking our foundation of scriptural foundation from Luke chapter 11 and from verse 1. This is the foundation for our teaching. And it came to pass, as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. So he said to them, when you pray, say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us day by day our daily bread and forgive us of our sins as we also forgive everyone who is indebted to us and do not lead us into temptation but deliver us from the evil one. And so we want you to know that it was important to those disciples that they prayed the right way. Because praying in the right way will bring answers. And they observed Jesus, how he was praying, how he prayed, maybe the words he was, he was using, his approach was maybe different to the traditional way that they were accustomed to pray. But I believe that and that's me, that what really moved them maybe was the fact that Jesus prayed and he got answers. And there are many people who are praying just because they think it's a good thing to do. You know, like parents will tell their children, did you say a prayer before you go to sleep? When you get up, did you say a prayer? I remember growing up, that was drilled into us. Pray in the morning, Pray before you go to bed. It really didn't mean anything, but it was a good thing. Some people think if they pray at night that they will keep the devil away from them and, and all these kind of things. And people just pray because, you know, they, it's a good thing to pray and they don't even know why they're praying, who they're praying to. But, you know, prayer is a powerful thing. So that when Jesus, he prayed, and when the disciples asked him to teach them, he did not ignore them, but he taught them because he knew that it was very, very important. Because when we pray, like I mentioned, it's like we're inviting God. We're inviting God to come into our situation because we need his help. We need his help. So it's a good thing. So he did not ignore them. And I believe that many of you, you've given up on praying. Or maybe you want to give up on praying because you know, nothing comes out of it. And maybe you say, I've outgrown this thing I used to do as a child. But I want to let you know this, that there are situations in your life that you will face, and some of you are facing them right now, and you need God to intervene. And that's why you need to pray to get answers to prayer. God loves you, and he wants to answer your prayer. 
And you know, in growing up, we say that prayer, and it was more or less a repetitious thing. But now we have more sense. Instead of saying, our Father, you can say, my Father, or you can say, dear Father, who art in heaven, you know, and you say, I give you praise for your name. Knowing that your name, there is power. Knowing in their, your name, there is victory. Knowing in your name, there is deliverance. Knowing in your name, there is healing. Knowing in your name, there is hope. You can change it and make it personal so you can get more from it and then you would feel that God is really hearing and he will answer your prayer when you change the style of it and apply it to your life. Not, not saying, our oh, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be. No, make it personal and say, my Father, you are in heaven. I give you praise for your kingdom and for your will to be done in my life. And you make it, make it a personal prayer so that you can gain some strength and courage and hope knowing that the Lord will provide, meet your every need as you ask him to forgive you as you forgive others. That's another thing. If you are asking him to forgive you, he's forgiven you, then you have to be willing also to forgive others. So when you forgive others, you will be forgiven and you can have hope in the Lord that your prayers will be answered. Amen. And, and you know that concept of forgiving, asking for forgiveness is one of the keys. As a matter of fact, it's the first key that we shared with you when we say be right. First of all, be right with God. And the way you get right with God is to deal with the sin problem. You know, God loves you. He hates the sin. That's why he's made provision. You know, he's made provision. When you sin, if there is sin in your life, David says, confess. If we confess, God is a forgiving God. God is a forgiving God. So you make sure you're right with God in your own self and you're right with other people. If other people have wronged you, then forgive them. Forgive them. Make sure, and when you forgive them, the degree to which you forgive those who have wronged you is the degree to which God will forgive you. Because Jesus says, if you don't God forgive, God is not going to forgive you. And if God is not going to forgive you, he's not going to hear and your answer prayer. your prayer. Because it says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, tell me, say, that the Lord will not hear me. For the children of Israel, it is your sin. It's not a problem with God. His hands are not shortened. His eyes are not blind. His ears are not deaf. But your sins have separated you. So you can deal with this sin issue because God is a loving God. He made provision for that. So last time when we closed, we were dealing with the key, key number 10. And key number 10 is praying with thanksgiving. Praying with thanksgiving. And when we read the verse, which we will read again for you in Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 to 7, it says this, it begins by saying this, be anxious for nothing. And you know, last week, let's see, we talked about, you know, dealing with anxiousness, anxiety. Anxiety is worry. All right, worry when you have this thing. So he's saying, if you're going to go to prayer, then you have to deal with the anxiety. What is the thing that you are anxious about? What, what is that thing that you are dealing with? Maybe something that you've been threatened with. Maybe you went to the doctor and you got a bad report. Maybe your bank statement is a bad report. 
something your children that's creating anxiety for you. I remember there was this one lady when we passed her, she was always anxious. She had a lot of anxiety about her children and she was always, oh, I don't know what will happen to them. But you know what? I used to tell her, don't worry. You put them in the hand of God. You teach them the way of the Lord and expect God to hear and answer your prayers. And God will. And today, the kids are doing well. So deal with this thing, the anxiety. Because what we're saying is, if you continue or try to pray, and you will be anxious. There's a story that comes to my mind right now. David. When, when, when David, in the book of Kings, a second Samuel, when the enemy came in Ziglag, destroyed Ziglag, and took away all David's um, the, all, all, all the, the people women, all the wives. and the wives and the children of those who were with him, and they were so discouraged that they wanted to stone David. But the Bible says the first thing David did, David encouraged himself in the Lord. He dealt with the thing that was supposed to create anxiety in his life. He dealt with it. He encouraged himself. Why? Because he had a relationship with God. He knew God. He got his strength from God. He got his heart settled. And then he prayed, Lord, should I pursue? Lord, should I recover? And then God spoke to him. God said, pursue and you will recover all. But notice the first thing he had to do was to deal with the anxiety. All right? He had to deal with the anxiety. You have to deal with the anxiety. And what does it say? Casting all your cares upon him because he cares for you. Yeah, cast all. And when we say all, just throw everything forcefully upon the Lord because he cares. And uh, in Proverbs 3, we always quote in that script here, trust in the Lord with all your heart, not half of your heart, some of your heart. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't try to reason out anything. You just put it in the hands of the Lord because he has the plan. He knows everything. He's in control and he's going to work things out for you. But you have to learn how to trust in him with all your heart. And lean not onto your own understanding, but in all your ways, all, not some of your ways, all your ways, acknowledge him and he will. Here it is again, positive. He will direct your path. He will. Amen. And so, so it is so very important. And we've been, you know, talking about it because it's important so many of you are struggling with this thing be at peace and the verse continues so you 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 put away you be anxious for nothing nothing no matter what it is big small medium heavy light for nothing be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer supplication, different levels of going before God. And I like that. And that's the key. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Thanksgiving. You see, thanksgiving to me, that is an expression of faith. It's an expression of faith. Yes. As a matter of fact, the, 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 the Hebrew word there for thanksgiving is the word toda. And there is a meaning that I, I found. He said, thanksgiving, there speaks in the Greek, the meaning in the Greek, which is duty of which gratitude is the grace. The, a duty of which gratitude is the grace. Just stop there and think about it. You're being anxious about a certain thing. Stop and begin to go back and think of how many times God worked for you how many times God came through for you and so right now if you would just stop and think boy remember last year two years ago three years ago we all have testimonies 
when we didn't know what to do and seemed like we were facing an overwhelming situation, when we prayed to God that God came and God intervened on our behalf and just being able to think about that, you should be able to enter into a spirit of gratitude. The Bible says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The good things get into thanksgiving and thanksgiving, which is the, the Hebrew word toda, lifting of the hands to God in gratitude for what he has done, what he is doing, and what he will do. That is believing. Because if you get rid of the anxiety and you begin to get into thanksgiving, into expression of gratitude, you know what this does? This will activate your faith and get rid of all the doubt and unbelief. Give thanks. Be grateful. And you know something? There, there, there is always something like this. Before you call, he answers. I experienced that many times. Something's in your heart, but you don't even tell anybody. And the answer comes. Why? Because your trust was wholeheartedly in the Lord. And the Lord knows your heart. So before you call sometimes at whatever you are going through, before you even make it known to anybody, you make it known unto God because the Lord knows your heart. And before you call, he answers. And you get your victory. You get your deliverance. You get exactly what you are calling on him for. Amen. And, and here, here is a scripture. Psalm 50 verse 23 says this. He who bring an offering of praise and thanksgiving honors and glorify me. And he who orders his way right, who prepares the way that I might show him, to him I will demonstrate the salvation of God. My goodness, this is so powerful. Let me read it again. Let me read it again. It says, He who brings an offering of praise and thanksgiving honors and glorifies me. So, see, if you're praying, Father, I'm praying for my children that they would be saved. Oh God, I don't know what's going to happen to them. But Lord, I am praying that you would help them. You would protect them. I'm praying, God, that this report that I received from the doctor, God, that this thing will not kill me. Because, yeah, you know, Lord, I don't know. But how about if you change it that way? Father, I thank you. I received this report. My children are out there. But Lord, I'm coming to you. I cannot help myself. That's why I'm praying. So I'm lifting up my hands to you in thanksgiving. Lord, I'm offering praise and thanksgiving to you because I don't know how you're going to do it, but I know you are going to do it. So I thank you, Lord. I praise you. You know, the Bible says when you offer praise and thanksgiving, you glorify God. You glorify him. And when God is glorified, when scripture says this in the book of Hebrews, I believe, God, or uh, rather Psalm, that God inhabits the praises of his people. And here in the scripture it says, when you glorify me, when you honor me with thanksgiving, he says, I will order you, and you order your steps right. He says there, to him will I demonstrate the salvation of God. Whoso offereth praise, glorify me. And when you pray with thanksgiving, God comes in. God comes in and he demonstrates his power and his glory. So that sickness that the doctor says, there is nothing I can do for you. Hallelujah. That he says is in, 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 un, incurable. God will manifest his power. Because when you praise, you're saying, God, I believe. I trust you. I believe. I know you are able. I don't know how I'm going to get out of it. But I give you thanks. I give you praise because I know you are able. You are able. So hear this. Whoso offer praise, glorify the Lord. How about taking some time to give glory to God? I'm thinking of Paul and Silas. When they were in prison, they sang praises unto God. And when they sang praises unto God, what happened? 
the angel came and set them free. You can start praising the Lord and get your victory. You can start praising the Lord and be free, be healed. Your life can be changed all because you are praising the Lord. When you praise the Lord, the blessings come down. The blessings come down. So start opening up your heart, open up your mouth, and start giving God praise. So if you need healing, if you need a job, if you need whatever it is you need right now, start praising the Lord. Stop murmuring and complaining and grumbling and fussing and stressing. Stop that. And start praising the Lord because that's your key. That's the answer to your problem. Amen. Mark eleven twenty four says this. Therefore I say unto you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. So if you believe, when somebody gives you something, what do you say? Thank you. Thank you because you receive it, right? No, when you pray, when you pray, and we are going to pray quickly, we're going to pray. The Bible says, believe that you receive. And an expression of your belief is by being grateful, thanking God for what he is going to do. So, Father, we thank you for whatever that they are praying for, whatever they need, whatever is causing anxiety in the lives of your people. We bring it to you, Father, in the name of Jesus. We pray, we make supplication to you, Lord. Intervene, bring victory, God, bring answers, bring salvation. And Lord, we believe we receive. And so we lift our hands and toward her and say, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, right Hallelujah. where you are. Say, Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory thank you, thank, thank you, Jesus. thank you, thank you, Father. Thank in you. Jesus' in name, Jesus. we believe you receive. Send us your testimony in, the name in of Jesus. Jesus' name. Until next time, remember, we love you and God bless you greatly. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. God bless. Thank you for watching our program today. We trust you were encouraged. To connect with us, our website is www.pastorwlj.com Until next time, be blessed.